What's up, you guys? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I am going to do a little podcast with Keisha, my special guest, who's joined me in my studio today. Hazel! Today, we want to talk about a topic that some of my Patreons have been asking me as well. What is Singapore girls like? Lucky for you, she's a Singapore girl. I am girl. a Singapore girl. <laughs> Who would have guessed? This podcast, this is our views and this is our character. Okay, of how we see. How about we put in a little disclaimer that mm. my opinion and Lionel's opinion, it's all just, Singaporean girls, it's just an opinion. It's not like someone a else. general consensus. <laughs> like, not when like, we went out doing a survey and, like, hello, ma'am, can you fill out what you think about Singaporean girls? Like, no. It's just like one person and another person, and that's our opinion. Mm-hmm. And it is does not in any way reflect. The actuality of Singaporean girls, and this is just this video oh just for entertainment purposes. That's why it's called a podcast, Tisha. <laughs> no, that, that was the disclaimer. You can put that. Okay, no, I'll put what you just said. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask her a couple of questions, yes. and she's gonna answer truthfully from her heart and from her experience of what she knows. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, got Wuhan virus. <coughs> just kidding. I don't have Wuhan virus. Are Singapore girls demanding? demanding with like the importance of social media in our lives there's just a lot of comparison going on and I feel like just in our like modern day and age of course girls are gonna be more expectant of bigger gestures from guys just because like when something happens everyone's putting on Instagram like oh my god look my boyfriend like bought me a yacht so like then subsequently all the other girls are gonna be like you better buy me two yachts you know that kind of thing so you're saying because of this DNA and social media yes girls and I will say guys as well. Yeah. Tend to compare and kind of like want to show off like on Instagram mm. and you know show like oh yes. what did my boyfriend did for me and yes. oh he's so sweet. To me I feel like you do not need to publish it. Mm. Because what your boyfriend did for you is just for you. You don't have to go show it to the whole world. Whereas I think a lot of girls today they would like to brag and show it to the world mm-hmm. just to feel good about mm. themselves. But to answer your question of mm-hmm. if Singaporean girls are demanding, mm. I would say that not outwardly, but very like passive aggressively. So they won't tell yeah, you the, directly. Like, no la, it's okay, don't need to buy for me that la no it's okay la like my friend got it but it's okay, do it for me la so it's kind of like the hint hint thing. Yeah, like kind of, I feel like that's a very typical thing of like. Oh, that's that's girl? for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are Singapore girls okay to be wrong? Will they admit that they are wrong if they are wrong? I feel like Singaporean girls do not want to be wrong because of education. Even though they are wrong, they just don't want to lose face. I mean, for me, it's like even if you're wrong, just admit it and move on. It's no big deal. But Asian culture, especially, a lot of people do not want to admit wrong. Oh, true. Like like the like Tulian kind of thing. Mm. The Tulian kind of concept. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Embarrassment. Yeah, like, or to like be wrong. losing your ego. So yeah, like but I th- I would say that is like mostly in the Asian culture. Like even if you go to a doctor. And if you're smarter than the doctor, the doctor will not say he's wrong. True. Do Singaporean girls like house chores? House chores? Like house chores? Like cleaning? Yeah. Will they do the again, cleaning? Will they do the varies, cooking? It varies from person to person. Again, in this day and age, we're getting more educated. We're getting more empowered. So I would feel like a lot of girls these days, especially Singaporean girls, know what they want. I mean, like, yes, we're all educated. We strive for what we want. And I don't think a lot of girls have that very traditional mindset of um, their dream to be a housewife. So in that sense, no, I don't think that they would enjoy doing the job. It is harder for Singaporean girls to be a housewife. Yeah, it, especially in Singapore where there's such a heavy emphasis on education. From a young age, I always thought like, oh, like, go study, be a doctor, be a lawyer. So obviously, like, it's drilled in our heads that we have to have a career. Mm-hmm. So I definitely agree. Housewives, men, do the cooking. It's always like an equal thing if yeah. you're in a relationship. So guys, if you want to get a Singapore girl, make sure you got to do the housework as well. Because we're not going to do it. <laughs> we're going to meet. Which is very common in Singapore. And don't expect food on the table when you get home. <laughs> expect McDonald's bags on the table when you get yeah. home. People over here, they want convenience. Take it's, away a McDonald's yeah. or whatever. You don't have to do the washing. You don't have to do the cleaning. It's a fast-paced society here in Singapore. Mm. Nobody really has the time anymore. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Like, Singapore is such a... It's a country that moves so fast. Like, everyone is so impatient. Everyone is so, like, on the go. Sorry, Hazel. I just... Mwah, sorry, hit her nose. How devoted 
are Singapore girls? I say like very because I feel like in recent happenings, I've seen a lot of things about guys cheating on girls. Yeah. Or like guys being unfaithful. You know, like the there was a guy who like leaked his stuff. There was a guy who like leaked his girlfriend's like sex tape or something. Women are more loyal than men here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> no. <laughs> in a certain extent, yes. But I would also like to say that divorce rate in Singapore is a lot higher than <laughs> true, in the true. past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the cause of it? That's what I want to know. I think in this society here, it is very common for people to get divorced. Divorce? Whenever they get married, and if things don't work out, divorce was the answer. It's always the answer. I have it's a like theory. Easy. I have a theory on this you know? divorce thing. Mm -hmm. Because in, I don't know if it's just a Singaporean culture. I need to burp. Give me a second. I'll repeat. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Not just Singaporean culture, but maybe it's the Asian culture thing. That's a very, like, when you're young, mm -hmm. like, when you're young, go get a boyfriend, go get married, get married by, like, 23, go settle down, have a family mm -hmm. at a very young age. And that's a very, like, traditional kind of mindset. The older the, generation. Yeah, the older generation's kind of pushing that. And then people, like, the younger generation is like, oh, okay, let's just get married at 20. Mm -hmm. And then they realize, oh, it's not working out. So that's why the divorce thing happens. Like, that's my theory. So you, you're think. saying it's because they jump into a relationship mm. just because of culture-wise? Yeah, wise. because of culture. Then they're like, oh no, I'm getting old, I'm never going to get a boyfriend, I'm never going to get married. And then they jump into it and they're like, ah, oh, should I wait it? Then divorce. Is it easy to date a Singapore girl? No. Why? Are they not approachable? Yes. Yes, they are not approachable. I feel like a lot of Singaporean girls... I don't want to get back. Why? Because I'm, I'm going to talk about... But it's a lot. good thing, right? You're not like... No, no, the no. girls are not flirting no, no. around, isn't it? You're no, not uh, going to no. get bashed you, for that. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> A lot of the girls, right, in Singapore, mm. the because of like the Asian features, they got a lot of like RBF, <laughs> like resting bitch face. So in that sense, like they're very unapproachable. What was the what was the initial question? Are they approachable <laughs> today? If somebody from outside just goes to the bus stop and talks to you oh. and say, "Hey, I would like to get to know you. Could we go on a date and have dinner or something?" Funny story about that. Mm. Recently, I got approached on the bus. No, and then the guy <laughs> was saying like, "Um, I'm surprised you're so friendly because." usually Singaporean girls aren't. And that's coming from a guy's point of view. So from him saying that that he's probably tried it before, I don't know if he's tried to pick up other girls on the bus. But like he's, he said that other girls are not that friendly. So Kisha yeah. is trying to tell you guys that she's approachable. Not, not me, but like I'm just saying the vast majority maybe are mm. not very approachable. So how would people want to date a Singapore girl if they are not approachable in public? Is it Tinder? Tinder? Yeah. So the best way to find girls who are actively looking for relationships or hookups, Tinder. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> this video is so, so all over the place. Like, literally, what is going on? The, the topic of the video was like, um, Singapore girls. Singapore girls like? Where are we at now? <laughs> Tinder. Well, I mean, okay. I can understand what Keisha is saying. It's like, if you are going face to face, the girl is a bit more protective. She'll be like, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. yeah. But then if it's like an online thing... That and means she's actively like... looking. So like... Also, she does... Then barriers are down. Yeah. Also, she also do not feel so intruded or threatened because it's like through a phone and all. So you get to know based on conversation in messages. And then later, maybe if she likes you, she'll meet up. Mm. So that's how dating works in Singapore. Mm. Majority of them. Yeah. So what, what about clubs? If they go to the club, you know, in the club, you know. I wouldn't know because I'm not a clubber. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't know how getting picked up in the club feels like. But from my perspective, it feels like a guy buys you a drink mm -hmm. and then you balik kampung. <laughs> A guy buys you a drink yeah, and you and go the girl, home. The girl's like, no, you mean she goes home with him or, or no, just? No, and then like she's like, buy. I got my free drink. Gotta go. I feel like that's like why I hear a lot of the time. The girls like, yeah, free drinks. You're advising men out there watching this, don't buy girls drinks in the club. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Please buy girl drinks in the club. <laughs> Do whatever you whatever you can to mm. pick a girl up. You know, like keep it coming. Wait, what? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> what was the question? What am I talking about? This podcast has been terrific <laughs> so far, by far. I'm so sorry. So like when you get me on a on a show, right? It's a buy one get one free deal. You get quiche and also chaos. <laughs> However, I think that a lot of Asian girls would really like to get the approval of their parents when it comes to guys. Really? Yeah. Singapore girls? Coming from... Come on, Singapore girls yeah. just date any guy without their parents' consent. Come on. Really? Yeah, you know, it's like, hey, here's my boyfriend, suck up. <laughs> or do you want me to answer, like, in terms of me? 
if you have a boyfriend, uh-huh. would you get your parents' permission first before you um, date him? No. There you go. There you go. Because <laughs> I feel like that's embarrassing. Like, just from my point of view. Imagine I come home with a boyfriend on, like, the second date. And I'm like, Mom, here's my boyfriend. And then two weeks later, she's like, where's your boyfriend? And then I'm like, we broke I up. don't know. <laughs> Isn't that just embarrassing? Like, to your parents to be like, what is my daughter doing? So that's why I wouldn't do it. So you're saying the process is like, they would date the guy for some time first. Yeah, and then when you know things are going well, then you're like, Like, okay, you're going to get married with him till the day you're going to get married with him, then you probably like, introduce it to your parents. Or like, if it's been going very long term, then yeah, you'll be like, hey, mom, by the way, mm. I got a man. <laughs> are Singapore girls open to have kids? Yeah. Yeah, I feel Everyone? like... Not everyone, but majority? Majority, the vast majority. Okay, and how many would they want? I mean, okay, this is not China, so there's no like one child policy. So I'm saying like two, because one is just boring. If you're gonna have a kid, like go big or go home. Like get <laughs> Go big nobody, or nobody go home? just gets one. Like if you go to the store and you go and buy like a bunch of bananas, you buy one, no, you get a bunch. Okay, let's talk about archetypes and stereotypes of Singaporean girls. When you think of a Singaporean girl between the ages of 12 and 16. 12 and 16? Yes, what is your image? So basically like a Xiao Mei Mei. Dumb. <laughs> this is just what I think. 12 to 16, they only want to do what they want. The first thing that comes into their mind, they don't think first. They just do it. Even in a relationship based on feelings. But I guess that's what, that's what happens when you go through puberty. And they get heartbroken and then they get sad. I said I agree with majority except for the <laughs> fact that girls are dumb. Girls are not dumb. Boys are dumber. Thank you. I like that you are fighting for <laughs> women's rights. <laughs> So, let's mm. move on. 16 to 21. Yeah, it's five years. Again, girls are very emotional species. They... Stop, boss. He's describing me right now, okay? Like, this is my age range, so... And this is the worst time for a female to be dating because they are very vulnerable. Decision-making is all based on their heart. Infatuations. There are times where guys cheat on them and they don't even care and they'll still continue and go on with the relationship. They are not thinking straight at this age. Thinking straight. As much as I agree mm -hmm. with Lionel for a lot of the descriptions, mm -hmm. <laughs> hearing it coming from a man, 16 to 21, you're probably um, finishing up secondary school, going to poly, worrying about your future, or you're going to express you're going to JC, you're going to work hard, get the A-level cert. We are talking about relationship. We're <laughs> not talking about career drive. I've got nothing to say already. You can just cut the entire thing. Thanks oh, so I'm right then. <laughs> Like I said, I don't disagree, but just hearing it come out of the man's mouth. You get mad. I did say girls are very vulnerable at this age. Yeah, I'm just like, warning them. I'm just trying to like, caution them. Right? I feel like that's just a girl thing in general. Yeah. Because we just feel more, we're more sympathetic, yeah. we're more empathetic. Mm -hmm. We're just more feeling creatures. Mm -hmm. We just have a lot of love in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Unlike men. <laughs> This just became like a girls against guys, like, battle. Okay, so and then the next age group would be the 22 to 20... 22 to 20, 30, 20, let's go. 22 to 30. I would say that girls, they would have more criteria. They would oh, have yeah. more... Uh, they would know what they want. They would have a lot of checklists. So if you're finding a girl around that age, oh, does she have a car? Does he have a career? What's his education level like? You know, what's his savings? You know, if I'm going to marry him, then I got to know if he has enough to support me. At this age, I think they are more clear to decide on what yes, they actually Yes, and want. I agree because at this point, they're probably like very deep into their careers. They also know what they want in the future. They know what they want. They know what they're going to want to be. Mm -hmm. They have a very clear plan mm -hmm. of what their life is going to be like. So if a man cannot fit into her, her life, life plan, yeah. he's cut out. Yeah. So next one is to be 30, 30 to 40. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> you're probably shopping at FairPrice a lot. <laughs> getting the coupons, using your McDonald's app to get the oh, yeah. deals. Yeah, yeah. Probably when you're like 30 to 40, you'll be like always have... It's annoying to date a 30, 40 girl as well. You know why? Because I when you go know. to a restaurant, you'll be like, oh, is this card... Does this card have a discount Me? and all that? Okay. I'm like, can we just eat? Like, the thing. I'm here I'm to eat. I'm here to eat a particular meal, but you are there embarrassing me, asking me about this coupon, discounts, and all that. Here's the thing. I'm nowhere near the 30 to 40 range, but I do this. If I'm at a restaurant, and I see that little thing at the side of the table that says, OCBC card holders 10% off. You think I'm not going to shuffle through my wallet and find that OCBC card that I use once a year? Of course I'm going to do it. It says me 10%. Of course. Mature. Yeah. Mature girl. I'm just an auntie. <laughs> 
by that age, from 30 to 40, girls would probably give up on relationship. Most of them would not even bother. They would be like, if it comes, it comes. But if it doesn't, they are probably more career driven by now, if they are still single, I'm saying. Mm. Being like a manager or a executive or a CEO. And it's very hard for them to match with a guy if the guy isn't in that level. At that level. And that would be harder. That's why you see a lot of single people in Singapore. Just work over work relationships. Work over relationships, yeah. Sadly, in a lot. And I don't think it's only in Singapore. I think you have this problem in America oh, yeah, and true. Europe. Basically, if the country is a first world, most of the time, it's this is the case. Valentine's Day. Oh my god, talk about Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is coming up. I think Valentine's Day is just another day. <laughs> Everything else is expensive. Roses are more expensive than all, a normal day. I will give her roses after the Valentine's Day because you know what? It's like... To save that $3. Not $3. <laughs> oh, a rose goodness. in Valentine's Day. One rose. One stock. Yeah, one It's well, Again, do like that just thing again? one stock. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's $10. How really? On Valentine's Day. If you buy it on another day, it's like $1. I'm gonna search. That's like 10 times the price. How much is a rose. His so, point is proven. Yeah. Usually it's a dollar on Valentine's Day, it's 10. Yes. Inflation. Uh, no, it's not. It's just rip off. And if girls expect me to buy flowers for Valentine's Day, I don't think I would date I her. don't think any girl expects. Yeah, if you buy flowers, then you're just wasting money. It makes no sense. I could buy her a better meal rather so than flowers. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I would rather have a meal on Valentine's Day than yeah. give me flowers. But night. this is a good thing as well because I get to see what kind of character the girl is. Oh, true. If she's smart, she'll be like, no, don't waste the money. Let's go for a meal. It's better. We could so, eat like, like fish the, and coal. Fish and coal. <laughs> you could just go down to your local bus stop. Mm. You see the weeds growing. There are these tiny purple flowers. Yeah. Just give that to your girlfriend. Chop it. Yeah. <laughs> this thing, you know, like the one that grows on the side of the... <laughs> Kishan, you, can't see. <laughs> you send it to me if you want. Send it to me and I'll insert it over here. Oh. Final question. Uh -huh. I will say final question. Yes. Are girls in Singapore open to marrying or having a relationship with foreigners? Yeah. They I feel like they're more open to having a relationship with foreigners mm. than Singaporeans. Oh, so if you're it's a foreigner, you get a better chance here. So you like white guys better? No, it's like, I think it's just a, like a human thing where you like things that are different. Like, <laughs> in appearance. You like things that are different, like... American guy, you're gonna be like, oh, he looks different. It's nothing like I've ever seen before. Attraction. You see them in movies all the time. No, as, <laughs> never mind. That was a really bad explanation. Mm. Right? And one of the stories, like, yeah, I don't think um at the end of the day that appearance or nationality or matters. anything matters mm. because what people really want is a relationship that lasts and what that depends on is the personality of somebody and the character and the heart. All right, guys. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it for our podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and I will see you in the next one. You guys keep smiling. Oh, no, I should do let Keisha. Keisha, you have to do it properly. <laughs> Hazel says, I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. I'll see you in the next one. You guys keep on smiling. See no, no, no. Keep on smiling. No. You on. guys keep smiling. You guys keep smiling. <laughs> you guys keep smiling. There's no on, right? Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Vlog. I'll see you. Ah! I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. I'll see you in the next one. You guys keep smiling. Hazel says, see ya. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like it, give it a like and a comment. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. Isn't that someone really creepy like a horror <laughs> movie or something? <laughs>